Here we go again doing some more scam baiting. This time, a guy by the name of Pedro wishes to donate some money to me after his massive Powerball win. What can go wrong? Let's find out. The original message came from a one Hernandez Benitez Francisco. It read, Two million million dollars has been donated to you by Mr. Pedro Hills. For more info, contact this email, Hills Pedro. Send your response to Hills Pedro. It's interesting he repeated the Hills Pedro address. I guess he got too many people replying to the Hernandez Benitez address. Anyway, I was quite interested in the meaning of two million million dollars, so I replied, Hi, I received a message saying that Mr. Pedro Hills has donated two million million dollars to me. Could you please confirm that this is indeed Indeed, two million million dollars, two trillion dollars, or is it actually just two million dollars? Either way, I'm happy. I just wanted to make sure that we're on the same page. Thank you, Bob. Seven minutes later, Pedro sent me back the obligatory wall of text. In it, he says his name is Pedro Hills Quesada. He's a native of Jarabacoa, Dominica Republic. Like you already know, I won the Powerball jackpot of three hundred and thirty-eight million dollars. Actually, I didn't know that, but thanks for telling me. He has a humble family. My family is a very humble family. He decided to do God's work and donate two million US dollars to a complete stranger. Thanks, Pedro. I believe our father has directed me to you as I prayed and searched Nova, the internet, for assistance because I saw your profile on a list of registered email addresses provided to me by Microsoft list from which I picked you. And then of course, the mandatory, be assured you stand no risk as this is my money. For source and verification, please see the link below. The link was a real link to a news story showing that a one Pedro Quesada did indeed win $338 million on the Powerball, but he won it back in April 2013. I wonder why he's left it so long to donate to me. Anyway, he also mentioned something about having to move to the UK. He wrote, I decided to elope to United Kingdom with my family because since I won this lottery, different taxes have been fallen upon me and much are coming. My pastor and my able ministers of God advised me to move to United Kingdom with my family rather than paying tax each week. Sounds reasonable. That's what I do when I don't want to pay tax. I elope to another country. He then goes on to request the standard personal information and signs off with Pedro Hills Quassad. Before I handed over all my personal details, I just wanted to confirm a few things with him. I didn't want to make it too easy. I wrote, Dear Pedro, wow, that's wonderful news. After the donation arrives, we look forward to visiting you and your family too. Just one quick query. In the news article, it says your name is Pedro Quesada, but on your email, you wrote Pedro Hills Quesad. Is Hills your middle name, or is it some kind of assumed name that you used while you were in New Jersey? Also, did you say you now live in the UK? Please answer these questions first, and then I can send you the information you asked for. Regards, Bob. About an hour later, there was still no reply, so I thought I'd probably scared him off. So I gave it one more try and sent him the following message. Hi again, Pedro. I'm looking forward to the $2 million, but my friend told me I just have to be a bit careful on the internet. I'm happy to send you my personal information, but I just need to make sure that your name is actually Pedro Hills Quesada. Is that correct? And you now live in the UK, right? I'm actually staying in Japan at the moment, but I'm from the US originally. Thanks again, Bob. I thought I'd just show him that I'm having a few doubts, but trusted him enough to let him know that I'm living in Japan and originally from the US. That seemed to do the trick, because six minutes later, he sent a reply. Hello, how are you doing today? Hope this email meets you in good health. First of all, my names are Pedro Hills Quesada, and yes, am presently residing in the United Kingdom. I do love to travel all over the world. I will advise you to try to fill out the application so that we can proceed with the information I will send to you to contact my attorney. Hope to hear from you soon, Mr. Pedro Hills Quesada. I realise that I probably need to be a bit friendlier to him from here on in so that I don't scare him off anymore. Scam baiting is a bit like dealing with a little nervous puppy for the first time. As I'm Nihongo man, that is Japanese man, I decided to take on the role of Bill Murray's character from the romantic comedy drama film Lost in Translation. I replied, Oh, that's great to hear. I love to travel, so maybe one day we can meet up somewhere. Anyway, here's the information you asked for. Name, Bob Harris. Country, Japan, originally from the United States. State, Tokyo Metropolis, age 53, sex, male, occupation, commercial actor, phone number, a fake Japanese mobile phone number, 
next of king. I guess he means next of kin, but I decided to interpret it as the next king of England, a one Charles, Prince of Wales, full name Charles Philip Arthur George. Pedro replied, Hello, how are you doing today? Hope this email meets you in good health. This is to inform you that I want you to use the information below to contact the Mr. Pedro Hills Quesada attorney so that he can get all the legal papers to proceed with your transfer. Contact name Bernhard Allahals Berger, email v.fisherlaw, phone number. As soon as you send Mr. Allahals Berger, please make sure you let me know. God bless you and your family, Pedro Hills Quesada. So I sent the lawyer an email. Dear Mr. Bernhard Allahals Berger, I've been asked by Mr. Pedro Hills Quesada to contact your regarding the collection of the necessary legal papers to proceed with a $2 million donation. Could you please provide me with the correct documentation? Thank you and kind regards, Bob Harris. And as per Pedro's request, I sent him a confirmation email. Hi Pedro, just letting you know that I've sent an email to Mr. Bernhard Allahals Berger. Regards, Bob Harris. The next day, neither had replied, so I sent another email making it look like that perhaps I was a little bit anxious that I had made a mistake or something. I wrote, Hi Pedro, could you please confirm that the attorney's email address is v.fisherlaw? I sent him an email, but he hasn't responded. Or maybe the address is fisherlaw without the v at the start. Can you please confirm? Thank you, Bob. I also did a bit of digging and found that a one Bernard Berger is an actual attorney for the Swiss-based law firm Kellerhals Carrad. Unsurprisingly, his phone number didn't match the one that Pedro had sent me. The original phone number has area code 575, which as far as I can tell is the US state of New Mexico. Hmm, seems quite far from Switzerland. It also turns out that V.Fisher Law is an actual law firm based out of, you guessed it, Switzerland. So are these scammers in Switzerland or New Mexico or neither? I guess it's just one big ruse. Anyway, I waited some more and they still hadn't replied. So I continued to play the impatient victim and sent Pedro another email. Do you know when your attorney will be available? Finally, I got a bite. The lawyer sent me a response. Attention, good day to you. Please kindly provide me the follow information in order to print out your document. Full names, address, country, state, identity card, I wait to hear from you. Doesn't really sound like a lawyer. He didn't even give his name or contact details. Obviously, the fact that they're asking for an identity means that this is an attempted identity theft. They want to use Bob's identity for some criminal undertaking. Playing dumb, I replied, Thank you for your response. Here are the details. Full names, Robert Harris. Address, some realistic but fake Tokyo address. Identity card, driver's license. Yes, I just wrote driver's license, just to see what they do. A couple of hours later, Pedro replied, Hello, how are you doing today? Hope this email meets you in good health. Yes, my attorney told me that he have sent you all documentation that you needed to sign and order information which you needed to try, no try, to proceed with him so that you can get funded as soon as possible. I will be waiting to hear from, from you. Right on cue, Pedro's attorney replied, apologizing for the late response due to time. He told me that I needed to download the two attachment file, the ownership certificate and the transfer process, and that after which you are certified, you will provide your banking details. Of course, I didn't want to download the files, so I just took a screenshot from the email app. The official looking ownership certificate from the fake sounding Pedro Hills Quesada Foundation had my fake name and details printed on it. On behalf of the committee, I wish to congratulate you once more for emerging. Why thank you, I like to emerge. It also had a pretty poor explanation as to how my email address was randomly picked by an automated program from the internet. If I was going to give away $2 million, that's how I would do it. There was also a mileage statement, maybe they mean an odometer disclosure statement, which stated, I hereby declare that this donation should serve as a means of empowerment to the locality and state at large. The certificate stands as proof that you are the rightfully owner of this donation amount. This can be showed or submitted in any given time. Perfectly worded and exactly what I'd expect from the Quasada team. The transfer process document was also pretty badly written. It had yet another address on it, this time of some real lawyers in Milwaukee. You can even see where they've copied and pasted in my fake details. The corner of Carrad is missing. One sentence that I particularly liked, Am your lawyer, barrister, Bernhard Berger, Callahals Carrad. I was assigned to you to guard you through the, this process till you finally get your donation in three working days. 
The document continues explaining about new regulations enforced by the World Bank Central Bank Department of Homeland Security. Anything over $10,000 to $50,000 requires a clearance certificate. The cost for this certificate is $1,800. But hang on, the World Central Bank government is now shut down. All money transfers have been withheld. Oh dear, whatever shall we do? So we decide that you only pay a little of the ownership certification and the clearance certificate, which we be just little of $401. There's also some ridiculous promising statement talking about splitting the $2 million into smaller payments to speed up the transfer. The letter goes on, I apologize for this inconvenience. If the government is functioning normally, you will not make this request. Why not? Even as I write this, try and support orphan kids with this funds, old people who have nothing to look up to. I'm eternally happy for you on this unexpected miracle. I shall advise you on how to pay, obtain ownership certificate and the clearance with 679 US dollars. So I replied, Dear Bernhard, I'm a bit confused. Are you based in Switzerland or are you currently living in Milwaukee or is it New Mexico? Anyway, I've downloaded the documents and from what I understand, I need to pay a $679 clearance fee. How do I pay this? Do you have an online payment system? Thank you for your assistance, Bob. Now that money is in the picture, a reply didn't take too long. As you can see, the grammar and punctuation are extremely poor. Your donation payout will begins from the moment you make the deposit. Use the below account information to pay the needed amount which $679. Send me proof of payment deposit slip your ID. It will be split into four stage till you get the complete amount of the $2 million. He then gave some actual bank details. Standard Bank is a real bank in South Africa. The Swift code, branch code and address all check out. He's given his account name as Oibo Gilbert. I don't know if that is the scammer's real name, but I will assume it is not. Anyway, even my fictional character Bob is not stupid enough to send money to South Africa to someone named Uibo Gilbert on behalf of an American slash Swiss attorney. So I replied, I don't understand. Who is Uibo Gilbert? Why do I need to send money to South Africa? Wouldn't it be easier if I send the money to your office in Milwaukee? My nephew lives just nearby your Milwaukee office. He can come and meet you. Believe it or not, they didn't give up. They replied with a fairly feeble excuse and some new banking details. I decided that this was a good time to end the scam baiting. They had already given me two sets of banking details from two different countries, so now was the time to scare them. I replied, Good day, gentlemen. It appears that your scamming days are numbered. I've reported the bank account details of Min Lin Chung to Capital One Bank. See the attached screenshots. I've also reported the bank account details of Oibo Gilbert to Standard Bank in South Africa, also attached. Your email history has also been forwarded to them. If you do manage to avoid jail, maybe this is a good time to give up your scamming ways and get an honest job. Kind regards, Bob Harris. Whether or not this will actually scare them or not, I don't know, but certainly it just might make them scramble. Thanks for watching.